May 2nd at Annie's Annuals and we just had our spring party about three weeks ago and we're getting ready for our Mother's Day party this weekend and uh, the gardens have been interesting this year. We had rain and rain and rain and cold and cold and cold and hail and more rain and more cold and more hail. So here we go. We're gonna go back to where we started from in the earlier videos. This is where we were planting last year. And as you can see, the roses are spectacular. The roses love the cold winter and everybody that's got roses is so happy. Right here, this is Agristema. It's one of my favorite cottage garden annuals. Uh, its common name is corn cockle, and its agristema githago, and this violet rose one is called mylis. I love it because it waves in the wind. It blooms for several months at least. They make great cut flowers with their long stems, and when they're done, they self-sow. They always self-sow. So you see that the agristema here it wouldn't be as pretty if your eye didn't take in that lime green Nicotiana right behind it. Right over there is the white version of it, Ocean Pearls. And we planted the Papa Versatidrums, which bloomed early. And this is a, a fast blooming Papa Ver. Here it is, it's a mauvey lavender. Uh, this is their seed, this one has already bloomed. And it's really good to pop these off like that. And if you keep up with that and you take these off, uh, the plant will bloom a lot longer. Here was the site of one of my disasters. Right here we had that Campanula persicifolia tellum beauty, which was going to make really pretty blue flowers, lavender blue flowers. And during the winter, during the rain and the gold and the hail, uh, it got very unhappy and didn't look pretty and I don't think it was going to bloom for the spring so I took it out. It got filled in anyway with the Scabiosa Fama Blue. And they're very scented, mm, like violets. So this will bloom spring through summer into fall. It'll just keep blooming and blooming. This is a really unusual Dianthus. You see it has really long stems and it pops up in the garden. So it's, it's a fun plant. And um, it's Dianthus carthusianorum. And it will bloom spring through fall here with water and deadheading. And this is a beautiful Cicerinchium. This is our, one of our California natives, blue-eyed grass. We collected this one up in Northern California for its extra big flowers. And I show you the Heuchera marmalade and how pretty it is with the Cicerinchium. Just that color contrast, that apricot and purple, sun or shade dry or moist, doesn't care, and it just makes really beautiful color contrast in the garden. Oh, we forgot to talk about Escholtia caspitosa. This is a little annual native California poppy called tufted poppy. And I love it because you can see how soft the foliage is and it makes everything look meadowy. It's incredibly fast to bloom and if you shave it after it's finished blooming, it keeps continuing to bloom and it self sows. And I love to put this here and there in the garden because it just gives some continuity and uh, gives that soft meadowy effect. So here again is the Malcomium meridima, which we planted in the last video, I believe. And so that I was saying that if this Sedalsia right here, which I adore, wasn't in bloom in spring yet, that there would be some color back there. So it kind of acts as a filler. And so it did do exactly like I wanted it to do. This was real pretty for the spring party. And now this is starting to bloom. And here we have our baby blue eyes. Normally this time of year, they would be all billowed out over the rocks. But as you can see, they're really late, but they're so blue and they're so beautiful. They bloom once, they're annuals, then they're gonna die. But when they die, they drop their seeds, so you get new plants every year. One of my standards I use in spring gardens to make some pop color, Silene diosha. It's a perennial, and it blooms spring through fall here with deadheading with its bright pink flowers. It's super duper easy, very tough perennial, and it self sows. And also for bright pink color, is my beloved Dianthus. I love Dianthus so much because they're 
They're so fragrant. This is one plant of Dianthus plumarius. I love them. They're very hard to find now in nurseries, at least around here. They have been replaced by an annual Dianthus that's already in bloom at the, at the garden centers and doesn't bloom for a very long time. And this is what folks are missing out on, what a real Dianthus looks like. They like full sun, they like good soil, and good drainage. If you plant them in the middle of a bed, they're gonna get crowded with everything else. They don't like that so much, but on the edge of the bed, they're spectacular. Speaking of scents, Viola, Corsica Ula, which is a little perennial purple scented Viola next to, which has gotten eaten a little bit by the slugs, <laughs> Viola Etain, which is very scented. And these blooms spring through fall here. And a lovely little California native, Leia glandulosa. And it's also scented. And I love this primrose yellow color. So you remember the baby blue eyes. This is the white version, so we call them baby white eyes. And these are lilies coming up to bloom in the summer. They're not ready yet. This is Lilium regal. You can see how many stems it's gonna have. It is the best lily in my opinion, Lilium regal. So here's a good example of the Sedalsia hendersonii, which I know I talked about in the earlier videos because it's one of my favorite perennials because it blooms spring through fall it's really reliable, it never dies, and each year it gets better and better. And um, maintenance-free, other than just taking off the tired flowers. And you can see it's just so pretty with the delphinium right here. And right back here is California native Facelia visita, which is very blue, much loved by bumblebees. This is Papaveroeus, and it's uh, all white. Uh, poppy and you can see all the buds coming right here and here so we had some disappointments this year because of the cold and the rain and the hail and we had some triumphs like this Lupinus Thomas Church while it's in so much bloom it's sending up tons more buds it is the happiest I've ever seen it this time of the year and right below it making a little skirt at the bottom is a a Mediterranean annual called Omphalodes linifolia and its common name is Venus's navel wart. It has a great common name and it's just doing really excellently this year. This garden wouldn't look so pretty if it didn't have the red poppy in there. And this is a Chiranthus alionii. It's extremely fragrant. It's a wallflower. And it's an old-fashioned cottage garden perennial. Comes back every year. Bright orange. And again, the Leia platyglossa, or tidy tips. They're so fresh and springy. And Campanula glomerata. This is Rocky Mountain Columbine. Not that many people still love columbines, but they are wonderful. And this is uh, Aquilegia cerulea the wild species. Nice and tall, not all short and squat. This is a Cornelia rose, blooms all summer and is disease-free. And right below it is a perennial forget-me-not, not an annual forget-me-not. This lives over the winter, and as you can see, it's just spread through the bed and coming out of the rocks here. And here's another Dianthus that I love so much, growing on the edge of the garden. And this is Dianthus Pinkerton. It doesn't really look like how I planned it. There are a lot of plants that uh, are not in bloom yet that normally would be in bloom. You're working with Mother Nature, and so it's different than painting a picture where you put that color down right there on that paper and it stays right there and you know it's there. With making a garden, it's, it's kind of got that magic of you have a co-creator in Mother Nature, so you're never quite sure how it's gonna turn out. didn't use any pesticides, there's no chemical fertilizers, just compost and soil. It's a healthy garden and it's a miracle. Don't, let's not go there. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> April and right. I forgot what month it was. 
and we had some triumphs like this and we had some triumphs oh so we had some disappointments this <laughs> <laughs>